Now, apart from so many videos that I have done for all these years, I still, I still get this question so many times. How to become a licensed pharmacist in the US what path to follow, which exams come first, how can we actually study for this exam. So in this video, we're going to break down the framework and actually see what exams are required in order to become a licensed pharmacist here in the US if you happen to be a foreign graduate. Let's go. There are basically four exams, three medicine related and one English related. So the first one is TOEFL. After January 1st, 2020, if you're somebody who is a foreign graduate pharmacist and who's applying after January 1st, 2020, you will be required to take TOEFL and pass TOEFL with the required marks in order for the boards to consider you to be able to take the next step, that's FPGE. So once you have graduated from TOEFL, and I have tons and tons of videos that will be linked somewhere over here and down in the description below for TOEFL, easy tips and tricks to follow. Then comes FPGE, that's the Foreign Pharmacy Equivalency, that's the Foreign Graduate Pharmacy Equivalency exam. And I have tons of videos made on that too, but this is the first step in order for you to be able to um, become equal to somebody who's um, graduated from the US. And this is the first step that you have to take and this is the first medicine related exam, if you may say, if you, are hap if you happen to be a foreign graduate pharmacist. So once you're done with TOEFL, pass the TOEFL with the required marks, then uh, is FPGE. I also have a course made on FPGE and you can um, sign up to that course uh, on my website, theafshalem.com. There will be a link in the description down below as well. After you're done with your FPGE, next comes NAPLEX. NAPLEX is a state exam that all the pharmacists, whether you are a foreign graduate pharmacist or a pharmacist who's graduating from the US, has to take. This is a state board exam that tests your ability to implement everything that you have been uh, uh, studying up till now as uh, in a clinical setting and um, in the US particularly. So this is an exam that's more of a clinical type as compared to FPGE, which is a pretty basic exam. Again, more on that in the course. I'll sign up to the website if you fancy checking it out, but NAPLEX is more of a clinical approach and uh, there are tons and tons of, vi of videos by other YouTubers who are teaching how to study for NAPLEX. After NAPLEX comes MPJE. MPJE can be CPJE or some other form of exam, but this is an exam that's for law of a particular state. So MPJE is a multi state exam and is valid for some of the state that includes Texas and that's the state that I live in but if you happen to be moving to California or some other state let's say MPJE won't be valid over there and there you'll have to take another exam that's exclusive for that state and for California in this case I think it's CPJE this is a law exam because every state in the US has different laws so you're supposed to be knowing the law knowing the law of dispensing the drugs etc etc if you're working in that particular state and you need to pass that in order to be considered as a licensed pharmacist or in order to get a job as a pharmacist in the US if you may and um Lastly, there are 1,700 credit hours that you have to fulfill as a foreign graduate pharmacist. Now, for most of these states, the 1,700 credit hours previously were 1,500 credit hours, but now they have changed the requirement, at least for Texas. So what happens is you have to uh, fulfill these 1,700 credit hours after you pass your FPGE. But for some states, like the state that I live in, that's Texas, I if I had opt on... Um, uh, choosing the internship and getting those 1700 credit hours done after moving to the next step that's NAPLEX after FPGE, FPGEE I would only be having six months to uh, take my NAPLEX and MPJE both and then I would only be having six months to apply for uh, my internship as well after passing for FPGE. So it's a co pretty complex requirement right there. And again, your state boards are the ones who know best. And uh, once you pass your FPGE or before registering for your FPGE, make sure you check the requirements of the state and whether you will be required to finish the 1500 or 1700 um, internship credit hours after your FPGE. Because uh, without these hours, you won't be considered as a uh, registered pharmacist here in the US. 
This video wraps up of all the requirements that you need to be following in order to become a graduate pharmacist or licensed pharmacist here in the US. More on that in my course link down below in the description box and if this video provided you any value please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and also if there are any other questions shout me a DM on my nerdy gram at Instagram or don't forget to leave a comment in the description in the comment section down below and I would be more than happy to reply to that and I'll see you guys again next time in the next video. Peace.